Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Um, if you could join us yesterday, you saw quite a few of Gabriel's colors. And today, uh, Gabriel Stockton, brand ambassador, um, sunny San Diego. I'm quite jealous of that today. Uh, we'll be going over his colors and answering your questions. Um, he answered a lot yesterday. So if you didn't, um, weren't able to look at yesterday's video, um, it'd be good to go back because he answered quite a few questions. Um, the U.S. artist asked him lots of really interesting questions, which I'm sure we'll just go ahead and ask again today. Um, Gabriel, welcome. Thank you for having me, John. You know, Gabriel's here every Thursday, every Friday. So <laughs> it's, uh, but today we get to spotlight just him and his artwork. So maybe today you can tell us um, a, a, about more personal. Where did you get your training? How long have you been a watercolorist? Have you done um, oil colors or acrylics as well? And we're going to see your um, your slideshow of your paintings. Yep. And then you're going to go ahead and be gracious to give us a demonstration. So with yep. that, everybody on Facebook, if you ask questions, I will um, bring those over to Gabriel as well. Angela, Ethel, Anna, Giovanni. Um, and on uh, Zoom, just ask directly. OK, Gabriel, welcome. Thank you for having me. Even during the midst of all that's going on in the world, uh, we're all still here, uh, passionate and excited to inspire people to art. So thank you for having me. Um, is the slides prepared? Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm gonna do a share screen now. Okay. So yeah, this is Gabrielle's um, brand ambassador page. I hope you could check this out from our website. And yeah, Gab, take it away from here. Yes, so I'm a, a recent uh, brand ambassador. Uh, during Shelter in Place, I was graciously uh, blessed with John entering a viral castanet uh, with spotlighting his studio. And that started this whole thing. So it didn't just happen, just fall out of the sky and John mm -hmm. give me this wonderful piece of paper. Uh, I just uh, happened to create this uh, strategic partnership and relationship. And I look forward to uh, more of that to blossom. Here is some of my information and my socials. You can find me on Instagram. I can't take any more friends on Facebook. Uh, you can't get more than 5,000. So please come on over to Instagram. Um, and next slide. And I believe this is another social. Uh, uh, this is, I captured the your page so that they could oh. uh, follow. Thank you so much. And here we have my website at Gabriel Stockton Fine Arts. Um, hunt around and go through the website. There, I'm updating it often. Um, other than accolades, uh, that one still needs some work. But uh, if you go over to uh, workshops, there's a lot of past videos of doing uh, demos with various watercolor societies. Uh, if you click on that top uh, tab for the gallery, that gives you the most recent work. And uh, yeah, and next slide. This will be your sample artworks, Gab. Thank you so much. Uh, this was a fun piece. This is in Oceanside Harbor. Um, it's shown uh, at various galleries. It's received uh, a few awards. Um, this piece was very fun and special and unique because um, I had usually when I go out and do plein air painting, um, I'll do a couple of paintings. And this would have been my third painting uh, in a three hour time with a group that I take out on Thursdays here at the San Diego Watercolor Society. Well, I had done the sketch of this piece. And what was funny was uh, I turned around after talking to another artist and giving a critique and whatnot, and my paint palette went missing. Uh, I had someone uh, clean up their area and they happened to pick up my paint palette because it looked like theirs. And so actually the drawing and the sketch was done on location, but uh, I created the painting half 
uh, by memory and tapping back into what it felt like that beautiful morning. Next slide. Oh, I love painting. This is practically my backyard. I'm just down the street from uh, Balboa Park where there's the California Tower and this wonderful bridge. Um, it's a very uh, beautiful place throughout the entire year. That tower now has a wonderful museum called the Museum of Us. There's so much to see. And even if I were to go paint this again, it's a different time of the year and there's all kinds of new things that will capture your attention. Next slide. Uh, it's not always sunny in San Diego. If you come, don't come down during May, what the hay and June gloom. May will have all kinds of different interesting weather um, and June gloom it will kind of look like this. And um, I received an award from uh, Linda, uh, who is an ambassador here as well. And it was a, just an honor to get a, an award from Linda Dahl for this wonderful painting. And she spoke over it that this feels like a gray day in San Diego. Next painting. May I ask, may I ask a question before we move on from that one? Uh, of course. There's phenomenal granulation in the water in the foreground. Can you comment about the pigments mixed to create that? Oh my goodness. So your question yesterday about having paints that have white in it and how not to create mud. This is a good prime example of knowing how to work with a pigment. Um, the beautiful thing here was this was the day that I uh, had met up with an artist that was uh, in town. He asked me if I'd be able to paint with him. And I already had a previous meeting. It was taken day for the gallery where I'm the director. And so this piece actually had to be done very confidently and very uh, quickly uh, because I was under a time constraint of less than an hour. And I thought when I sat up for this painting that I was going to use what I had done in previous paintings, especially the water. I had done a similar water where I used a cobalt uh, teal blue. At that time, I did not have the sleeping turquoise genuine uh, on my palette. And I had some... I also mixed in some um, do, 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 possibly titanium white um, that we have uh, here with Daniel Smith. And lots of water, lots of water and very confident brush strokes with a mop creates that wonderful water. Wonderful question. Did I answer it, Anna? Wonderful, thank you. You're welcome. So I have this wonderful new friend, Angela Barbie. I've been following her for quite some time. She's adorable. She gets out there and shows us her beautiful city and I get super jelly about her city. And so I asked her if I can uh, take uh, some photos with her permission and paint them. And this is one. There might be several others. And so, yes, I look forward to going to Italy. I look forward to going other places. And it's so beautiful to, uh, well, we, I did create one really nice painting that she liked and she then gave me several more beautiful paintings to paint uh, from gorgeous photos. And Gabriel, uh, thank you. Gabriel, yes. can you briefly, if you remember, um, Tell the viewers maybe what colors you use on some of the paintings that you're showing us. Oh, of course, of course. So uh, in this particular painting, we've got some beautiful hematite. We've got some beautiful granulation of uh, the green appetite. Uh, we've got some beautiful golden ochre with some uh, clean gold deep. And then 
um, to really make that beautiful bridge look very uh, thick and heavy in weight, I actually used uh, some wonderful uh, gray titanium. So in my work, I really push uh, opaques and transparent. Next slide. Ooh, this was a fun one. Uh, so this was a piece, again, I really try to push the quality of uh, the pigments, uh, that wonderful heel in the background. We just got a super saturated, beautiful uh, paper, uh, wet. People ask me, do you wet your paper? This first, and this is a good example of wetting your paper first and painting a really soft edges. Uh, it just gives you a sense of this beautiful atmosphere. And then you go moving forward uh, with the trees and the house and that nice little directional of the wonderful road that goes into the uh, garage there. And so, uh, yeah, this is uh, one favorite color of mine, jadeite, which I just feel like jadeite and the lavender uh, and the moon glow, and then just that little uh, beautiful uh, cerulean blue down in the corner there. They just, they, they just sing together. And then you have just some little red down there where the garage door is open. Next. Here we are with Girona again. Uh, the picture was a lot bigger. Um, there was more in the scene. And this is where I took my artistic license. Uh, so we have some wonderful granulation. This happens well with paper and pigment. So this is ultramarine blue at its finest with maybe a little bit of muck that was still left from the day before uh, that was in my tray, uh, my palette. Then we have some wonderful serpentine green with some beautiful uh, more uh, well, my favorite is uh, Moon Glow as well. And then uh, we have some nice uh, raw umber. And then down at the bottom, we bring back just a little hint of that green. Mm -hmm. Next. Oh, this is a fun one. So yeah, this was a pre-commissioned piece that I did. Um, I painted this and then uh, someone liked it and they asked me to paint specifically someone's uh, VW. You know, we all have a VW story, whether it's a van or a bug or a Carmen Ghia. And I like, I like connecting, I'm a connector with people. So uh, I paint things that we can all have a wonderful conversation. And this is another angle of the park. And luckily at that time when I was painting there, they were doing construction, so I could stand in the middle of the road. And, uh, but that particular day, it had not rained. It rained the day before and I had dro drove up Laurel Street. And I just, that just stuck with me, that beautiful. So I was like, I want to be able to paint that. Yep, next. Ooh, this is the painting that I just uh, capture people's attention with uh, when they come into my studio in Spanish Village. The top left there, uh, the tree, again, we're pushing, well, first of all, the sky. The sky is not white. The sky is, oh, it's, it's probably like 98% water and 2%, uh, you know, lavender. And then we have this beautiful wet in the wet uh, that's working with the tree in the far back that's got, you know, not all trees are green. Some are golden. And this is uh, the tiger's eye, which I love. Moving down into the jadeites, which just makes this beautiful, just this looks like jewelry to me in paper. And then, then we go all the way to tube right out of the, or paint right out of the tube, uh, right there where on to the boat. Cause I'm always showing here and there with oil painters and everybody loves the buttery look of oil painting. 
So with my work, I'm trying to have that transparency and that gorgeous butter. Next. Wonderful, wonderful. Did anyone have any other questions before I start painting? There's so there's a question from Sue. And Sue asked, if you're using three colors to create a black, should those three colors already be being used in the painting that you're doing? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I do feel like there has to be some kind of connection um, throughout the whole entire painting. Uh, I'll be doing a piece today where we'll have the shadows connecting the characters. Um, but I feel like uh, in my mixing, like say for instance, I have permanent alumsum crimson, that's probably somewhere in a tree. And then I'll have somewhere uh, burnt sienna or burnt hematite scarlet. Um, and then I'll have somewhere in that painting, definitely a uh, cool or warm blue. And I'll take those three and mix them together. They won't be thoroughly mixed. Uh, you'll see today, uh, I don't, I like to keep my colors lively. And so when my brush picks it up and puts it onto the paper, there's still some uh, variety and uh, there's a little, I don't know, variance. Uh, there's just like a slight difference. It's not a completely flat, perfectly mixed of the three. And, and Kristen asked a question. Your last image you had on the mast, um, there was some white zigzag. How did you produce that? Yeah, you know, so that is done um, at the very end, very confidently uh, by using the texture of the paper. It's uh, go back and look at the old masters. The old masters would use a rigger brush and they would start at the top and you just kind of uh, take a deep breath and whoo, really confidently take your brush and it would start thick and then it would do those nice little skips along the rough or textured paper. Mm -hmm. And yes, I used uh, either a Chinese white or I used a um, titanium white. Uh, that's just if you really uh, kind of squint when you're looking at mass, you'll see areas that they sparkle. And so it takes a little bit of practice to get there, but just, just keep doing it, keep going after it. Gabriel, do you use uh, masking fluid? No. Okay. Um, uh, the uh, weather can change so much uh, in three hours. Um, but yeah, I just slow down. I just slow my ADD down a little bit so I can uh, paint and save my white bedtime. Awesome. And probably the last one, and we'll ask more as you're doing your demo. Um, do you keep particular hours at Spanish Village? No, they're all over the place. I share a space with uh, uh, some other amazing artists that work in different mediums and we all have separate lives and families. And so we all get together and uh, we uh, look at a calendar and we, so no, I don't keep consistent hours. If you're coming to visit, that's why I have the Spanish villages. Sometimes I'm out there painting and I can't meet up with people and they could go over to my studio at any time between uh, 11 and four to see the work. Awesome. Okay, would you like to start? I wanna make sure that we give you enough time. Definitely. And can ask questions as you're painting or wait to the end? What do you prefer? Uh, you can ask questions, that's fine. Okay. All right, so today's piece. Um, so we have an area here in San Diego called Ocean Beach. And the cool kids call it OB for short. And um, this is my reference photo. And so today um, we're going to give uh, him someone uh, to be walking with down on the beach. Uh, we're going, yesterday we had a wonderful uh, question of how I use the tiger's eye. And so we're gonna be doing that here in the rocks. So we're going to allow uh, the painting to paint itself with that. And I did want to answer that question with someone yesterday. 
I asked about uh, cobalt turquoise right here and cobalt teal blue is here and sleeping uh, turquoise genuine is here. And so, yeah, they're kind of close, uh, but I like, I like to play in here. That's where I am. And uh, of course I have this one uh, for other projects. All right, I'll go ahead and move forward. So today I'm working on uh, some Fabriano paper. Um, it's cold press. I know a lot of people like ask that question. Are you working on an incline? I am. I always work on an incline because, uh, well, I need uh, that evaporation process working really well for me. So I'm going to get in here. We're going to get on this guy. Gabriel, and, uh, can you tell us your colors as you mix them? Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is a uh, leftovers mess, uh, which I need with my lavender. I'm going to just test that onto the paper. And I want a, just a little bit cooler. So we're going to go up here and we're going to put that just a little bit cooler. Now, while well, I got that um, beautiful paint moving, coming down, I loved how Anderson, he did this, if you go back and watch Anderson, he did this wonderful demonstration of how watercolor works. And he drew this great diagram on uh, how the water is just coming down as a beautiful bead and, uh, yeah, go back and check that out. It was, I mean, we all should understand that, but when someone, you know, opens your mind and puts it right there for you. So we got some areas here with some really gorgeous paint and we got some nice water, more water and then more paint. And I'm going, I'm going right down here, finishing up my sky. And we're coming here, and now we're getting into this wonderful part of the city that's uh, down the road in the background, and things that are far away, even though you, the sun might be shining over there, and, and you're seeing this gorgeous greens and yellows, I'm still going to make it visually cooler than warmer in my painting. So Gabriel, so, you said you're using, you were using uh, titanium white. Do you make any difference between titanium white and Chinese white? And if so, what would the difference of choosing one over the other? That's a great question. Uh, so there's times where I need to just, uh, I need it to just uh, be softer versus super shiny, like, there's there's just those subtle difference. Uh, I'm a, I'm gonna be the first man on the planet to admit it, uh, but I'm a definitely I'm a sensitive kind of guy, and I try to connect and um, just be sensitive to uh, my surroundings. Gabriel, do you always start with the sky? What's that? Do you always start with the sky? That's a great so? question. You know, there are times um, I feel like I could just go ahead and do the sky nice and confidently and get it out of the way and uh, get really going. But if I notice there's one part of my painting, so with watercolor, there's a lot of sit and wait. So if there's one area of my painting that I know I'm gonna have to come back to and let it dry, then I'll do the sky um, like at another time. But uh, for this demonstration, uh, we're just gonna do the sky once and leave it alone. Great question. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Do you have your board uh, at a slight incline? Yes, to yes, allow the water yes. Be to form? Thank you. That is correct. 
It's uh, maybe at a 15 or 25. This is a handmade easel by uh, Mr. Wilkins Simpson. He was a lumber guy and he made easels for his buddies that would paint with him in La Mesa, California here in San Diego. And I keep inheriting these and um, I started having like too many. <laughs> and every time someone would like see me, they're like, oh, I have one of those. Do you want it? And I was like, okay, sure. And my wife's like, how many of these easels do you need? And uh, it's uh, none of them are like interchangeable or anything. But Mr. Wilkinson had um, designed it to have just this little lever to lift up. So it's just at that right angle. And uh, it's just kind of like, even though he's passed and gone, it's like just this little gift that uh, is part of his legacy and his craftsmanship. Now we're going to start moving into uh, this area here. I'm going to go ahead with watercolor. We all should know we start with lighter to darker. Um, on this side is got some nice, beautiful golds. I love the Queen Gold Deep because, oh my gosh, the, it could be like super strong and um, dark, or I can add lots of water and really make it nice and light. I just love this. I love this. And uh, for some purists out there, I don't know what to say to you if, you, if you're not okay with it being man-made but it works for me and uh, we're gonna come over here so yellow ochre was my go-to and then I found out about this color uh, by watching John do uh, going through all the colors and yeah I had a whole list of paints that I had to go buy and try out because they seemed like ones I, I wanted in my palette. So we have this beautiful um, area here. So this is a jetty. And on the other side of that jetty is where they take the dogs to the dog park. And so you'll see uh, those areas. It's pretty funny because at one time in the 70s, they made these shirts. All the cat lovers were wanting a cat park. And so it's quite it's quite a joke, you know, where's the cat park if there's all this dog park stuff, you know? And so there was like this little thing over here, but it doesn't need to take away from the star of my show. So Gabriel, Gabriel you're, it looks you're, like you're using the same brush throughout all. And what type of brush uh, is that mop brush that you're using? So I have these two. Oh, okay. I have a mop. And then I have perlots. So I have uh, this nice uh, big perla, a medium, and a small. I just hold everything in my hand. I go back and forth. Thank you for asking. Gabriel, what do you feel the difference is or the subtle difference between hematite burnt scarlet and burnt tiger's eye? Say it one more time, John. So Valerie's asking a question. So speaking of the subtle differences, what do you feel is the difference between hematite burnt scarlet and burnt tiger's eye? Oh, it's a, a lot. It's a lot different. So over here, uh, we got the burnt. And then over here, we got the, there's, yeah, there's a huge difference. Like, to me, to me, there is. I think if you uh, work with some colors, uh, you're going to see the difference. You just got to get your mileage in there and just paint. Uh, so here we are. Uh, this over here is, uh, it's, this is a little bit of uh, burnt tiger's eye in tiger's eye. And um, maybe I just need a little bit bigger palette. And so I'm dropping this in there. We're starting to see some granulation form. 
And this side over here is definitely going to go darker. So yes, these uh, are going to have a little bit of our hematite and uh, some of the tiger's eye. But I feel, I mean, I haven't done my homework, but I feel like uh, the min, the actual, um, the size, the size are just a little bit different in what's reflecting or reflecting back and forth of the hematite or the tiger's eye is different. And you'll definitely see it more outside of painting. Dad, there's a question from Wenda. Uh, this is from Zoom. Did you soak and stretch your paper? No, not today. Not for this project. Thank you. It's a little bit colder um, here in San Diego. And so maybe in the summertime, maybe I might do something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and spritz here. This is not a pretty spritzer. It, I don't know where you can get one of these, but it has this uh, this little guy here where I could pour a lot of water here. And then it has this spritzer where it kind of just kind of spits. So I quit spitting on my paintings because some people are now worried about it with COVID. Uh, so we use this spritzer that kind of just like does these random weird spitting. And uh, yeah. So we're just uh, building up this wall area here. I know that this is the part of the painting where I'm just kind of um, playing. Uh, this is where, yes, you can, uh, Anna's question yesterday was wonderful about um, planning, but then allowing some, uh, moments of just beauty step in there. So we could plan all we want. Um, and so I think I've learned that by going to several places and painting more than once. Um, I kind of promised people that buy my paintings that I won't paint the same painting, um, but I didn't promise I wouldn't go back there and paint another one at a different time of the year. And uh, I grow as an artist by going back to that area, maybe a year. I think a fun thing to do is when, you know, when Facebook is telling you, hey, remember this memory? Mm -hmm. Like, and it's telling you what about 20 year paintings? Go that day and go paint it again. And, uh, you know, instead of being annoyed, be like, all right, let's see if we can go paint it just a little different uh, than we did, you know, a year or two or three, five years ago. I think Hi, Gabriel. I've seen that. Hi, Gabriel. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my phone. So I was all over the place. Anyway, uh, here I, we have a question by Larry. She says, yeah. are there any colors that sap your energy and that you hate her painting with, but keep, but you keep trying them anyway? <laughs> wow, that's a good one. I don't, maybe I'm too uh, young. I'm a, I'm a youngster. I don't have those negative uh, experiences yet. And so I will, I, give me your email. I'll let you know, and then we can talk about it more. Okay. But, there uh, you talked about going back and painting over again multiple times, same location, and I've had similar experiences where it's so encouraging to see the growth as an artist to say, oh, that was the best I could do at that season, and now to have seen the growth two years, three years, four years, ten years later. I, I found right. it so encouraging. It's so true though, you, right? I can tell you about an experience about taking Alvaro to the Cadaqués every year. And there is a spot, it's his favorite spot. He's painted it uh, from the top of the church, uh, looking down. 
He's painted it maybe 10 times and every single time it's so different. You wouldn't believe it's the same place. Nice. I love hearing those stories. I feel like it's just like playing darts. You know, when you play a game of darts and you throw it at the uh, board and you <laughs> you don't even come, come close to the bullseye, you know, but you scored a point and you uh, won the game. Um, you know, it, it's uh, it's still a win. Uh, I've definitely come from the place of allowing myself and other people that are learning and continue to learn. I'm always going to be a student. And uh, I think uh, we can always just see how we measure up and we can be kind to ourselves and uh, keep growing. That's coming along really nice. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on down. We're going to let that set up. And I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to spray it again like that. And then uh, and I, I want a nice little chunk right here. And if you think your painting is too precious, I think you should uh, definitely. Uh, oil painters talk about this. They'll go and they'll just... Uh, scrape it off well we can't scrape it off as a watercolors but uh we can spritz it and uh and see what happens so that area is nice and we're gonna go ahead and move down and come into here and we're gonna get some of titanium and one question no one's asking me is did i put all the same colors down again today. Um, no, I I put out the colors that I was gonna that I'm using today. Does this mean that you filled your palettes? You have dried paint of one pigment, and then you put another pigment on top that was a separate pigment, a different color. Not, it's not dry. It's definitely not dry because I paint pretty much every day. They, I could stick my finger in that uh, nice, yummy uh, orange, pyro orange right there if I wanted. But uh, yes, that's the beautiful thing about the watercolors, yeah. Uh, we have these uh, wonderful colors that can uh, come back together uh, with some water. Sorry, Gabriel, what colors did you just mix? Oh, yeah. So um, I just made it a game changer and I did some uh, buff titanium with some deep queen gold. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the brown ones was, uh, what colors were they? And the, the uh, jetty? Uh, we got some Taggart. Well, we first started with some Queen Gold Deep, and then we went into some uh, Hematite, Burnt Hematite Scarlet. I know I'm saying that wrong. And then we got in there some Tiger's Eye, whether it's burnt or regular. And then we had some Ultramarine Blue. Um, and I think I, I snuck in some uh, Moon Glow. Yeah. Mm. Gorgeous mix. Hi, Gabriel. This is Stella. I cannot resist. I love that we, we are painting with you, sweetie. That is, I love that we have here and we paint this. I love that. I'm painting We're all with together. <laughs> yes. We are. We are all here. We're all here together. There was a time, sadly, uh, I didn't talk like that. And I was very uh, all about myself. And we are just so happy that that guy does not exist anymore. And uh, God showed me I can have a better uh, life if I include everyone. So I, I keep calling myself an includer. But thank you, Stella. I love you. And thank you for the wonderful uh, things in the mail. I love I you share. too. My love language is gifts. So I like it when things come in the mail. It's nice. All right, so uh, don't ask what that was. I just mixed because uh, 
I'm just going to giggle. You'll have to watch the replay. And uh, because I just used just like whatever was all here um, to make this little area here just to put something down. All right, let's go ahead and just move right in here uh, into the foreground. You know, some people call it their stew or whatever. I just keep mixing on my palette and we're gonna go ahead and go here. Gabriel, I'm really just curious, big. is that natural hair from your brush or synthetic? This is a synthetic brush. Ah, so, so Ultimo. It's an Ultimo yeah. brush, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, watch this. Um, Go ahead. Uh, since you're in San Diego, I'm sure you can paint just about year round, but do you have a favorite time to head out and go and paint? When the sun's out, yeah, definitely when the sun's out. It's so nice. Uh, if you're asking me when you want to come visit and paint with me, every day, anytime. <laughs> uh, we'll have a good time, whether it's raining or snoring or sunny and hot and humid. Uh, if you think about when they come down here, Mark, let's uh, let's do it. Let's uh, you come down, come paint with me. I would definitely say the summertime. Cool, you're on. Thanks. We're having an ongoing yeah. discussion over at Facebook about do you ever close your palette because you mentioned your paints stay wet all the time. So they're thinking, doesn't it get gooey and put it on the lids of the other side? My guess is you never uh, close your palette. Uh, I don't know about gooeyness. I've never had that. I had that problem with an, uh, two other brands that I would, you know, close it up and throw it in my backpack and then everything gooped in on the other side or, or slid because of the type of stuff that that paint is made. But, um, you know, I don't have that problem uh, with Daniel Smith. Gabriel, in when it gets really hot out, do you ever use an umbrella or anything to slow the drying down? That's my next purchase. And I accept gifts. So if you have an extra one lying around, just put it in the mail. But yeah, that's the next thing. Uh, the umbrella I have now is just called sunscreen. And uh, you got to just kind of angle your painting um, or put something up that uh, then if you don't have this horrible glare in your face ruining your retinas. So that's a great question. Yeah. So then of course the other side of that question is when it's very, very cold and you're painting outside, do you add extra alcohol to your water and paint? No, 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 I don't so do that. I just I just, uh, what I'll, I just, I use water and paint. So yes, like uh, there'll be times that, uh, I didn't mean to say that derogatory. I'm sorry, I just, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Anna. <laughs> like, so yeah, so if I'm out there and uh, this is like uh, getting dry cause it's right out in the sun, I will just come here and spritz this. Uh, I even will spritz. I'll even spritz this uh, before I'll add maybe some paint. Yeah, so there, like there congeals. is never that cold in San Diego, Gabriel. Is it? <laughs> 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 I I have a question, Gabriel. Uh, Anna Marie yeah. asked that question, but you didn't really um, clearly answer about that. You said you're changing your colors and your palette. Do you take everything off and put new colors there? Or are you put some colors on the top of the others when when you choose your colors for the particular painting? Okay, like for instance, if, here we got pyro red, right? So right. if I put, if that day I needed a little bit of pyro scarlet, I'll put out like a little thing of it. Um, and no, I won't change it. So Next like when I'm it. putting out, yeah, so like for instance, uh, here's an example. Here's the tube, and I'll just come right here and go boop, just like that. That's how much more I'm putting on there. 
but you I'm still not... put similar colors next to each other. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I have on my palette a cool yellow and a warm yellow. And then I have a hot red cool, and a cool yes. red. Yes. So that's kind of how it's set up. Mm -hmm. Thank do you. you. Keep it, do you keep it all within the same family, such as you keep the ultramarines together, or you just keep it loose, whatever is the warm yellow, whatever is the green yellow? So yeah, sometimes uh, I'll accidentally just put some French ultramarine with some regular ultramarine. Like, uh, you know, um, if... But you wouldn't mix uh, magnes with a cerulean because they're different right. families or yeah, you use it that's, because they're both green blues. That's right. That's right. I would, ha I would have... That's what's cool about my palette for my vintage easel is it comes with this mixing table here that I can put out other colors if I'm needing, say like, yeah, the manganese blue or another blue like phthalo blue, uh, then I'll put on this one and I'll have my palette. That's, yes, thank you for helping me, yeah, direct that conversation. Is your palette a Holbein um, metallic palette, aluminum? Oh my goodness. Um, sadly, no. Mine, it came uh, as a knockoff. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> like they, they shipped me, they shipped not Holbein, but another company. They shipped me a knockoff. It's not even the real Holbein. But yes, it's supposed to look like a Holbein. So I don't know how long this is going to hold up. But you know, I really like the Daniel Smith um, uh, palettes that you can get. Uh, those are nice as well. But yeah, this is going to wear out um, this enamel paint. And so um, I have several different palettes. I don't know what happened to my sound. Gabriel, do you paint in your studio with the same palette? I do. Uh, well, it just depends. Uh, over here is, I'll have to set it down. My brushes, one moment. I also have a porcelain palette here. So I have this one and a couple other palettes. I can't get to them right now. You don't carry all of those with you when you're plein air painting, do you? No, 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 no. Uh, this is this is the majority of the one that goes with me, and I use for demos. I, I do, you use I'm, a little limited colors when you go out. Um, yeah, I got that little this one. I have this one here that uh, if I, if I have a quickie. Like a nice little quick uh, painting session that's less than uh, 45 minutes. Uh, I got this one. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I know I'm, if I'm out for three hours, uh, this is my go-to. Yep. Gabriel Rajat asks uh, from Facebook, do you improvise or add some elements while doing your work from reference picture? Yes. Yes, this, uh, these are two people and so the one, uh, we're gonna do something a little bit different down here today. Um, yes, I definitely allow something unique to happen um, in the painting. I don't stick to the photo. I'm not, uh, I'm not painting exactly what's in the photo. Gabriel, do you do sketching in, in, or sketchbooks before you paint? And if so, what's your preferred size? Yeah, I like little sketchbooks. Um, here's a good example. Uh, I have pulled this one off to the side. So here's one here. Um, I like this size. It allows me to paint in the golden section. And um, 
And here's later in the studio in this size. There's there's out painting and this one in the studio. Very beautiful. Thank you. All right, we're coming along. So this is kind of a sit and light kind of game here. Um, I am going to just do a little spritz here. And I'm going to keep John happy and not use a blow dryer. Just so we can see all the wonderful things that happen with the paint um, as it dries on its own. And I say that jokingly, but it is true. Like, uh, I do love seeing how uh, my paints and paintings turn out on their own without me using the blow dryer. Because I see, I see what beautiful things it makes uh, out on air painting. So I like the um, wonderful looks that happen there. And so I create that same thing in the studio, hopefully, God willing. So we got some people here walking down the beach and uh, they got their dog. He's maybe looking at something. And uh, let's put some clothes on these people. It's always a good thing. He's wearing like some kind of jacket. They're wearing some shorts. You know, um, I'm searching here. Yep. I like a pyro, a pyro orange mixed with some kind of green to make my people and their skin tones. That's just what I do. It's not the right way, it's not the wrong way. These people are moving, they're walking towards us, so they're, they don't have like these perfect calf muscles and all this stuff it's uh it's gotta have some movement <laughs> this has become a favorite question but do you have a studio pet that keeps you company? Uh, no, I don't uh, currently. Uh, my daughter, though, has some guinea pigs. and uh, But all they want from me is food. <laughs> food and water. That's true. I try not to take it too personal, though. Gabriel, when you're out uh, outside painting and the the um, it's hot and it's very, very dry, you know, real low humidity, do you then spray your uh, paper quite often so you can achieve that nice, soft uh, style that you paint? Mm, you know, um, that is a really good question. And the answer to that is I'm, I'm going back over a certain area. The answer is yes. Okay. Um, especially um, maybe if I, I always do a painting out plein air painting where I'm like doing only about 90%. And then I come back to the studio with fresh eyes and uh, maybe I will spritz the whole area uh, before I go and uh, paint, just uh, liven things up. So it just doesn't look like I just, uh, well, it'll look, if I go back and work on his jacket after it's already dried, it'll just look like I just laid something on top. And so there are, there have been some occasional times, not a lot, where I'll need to spritz an area. Um, and then before I paint there, because yes, it can get warm and do that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, just to kind of follow up, because I, I live in Southern California also, and 
And there were a couple of times when it was so, you know, like a Santa Ana day when it's so very, very dry. And I'm like painting the sky and I can't even finish it because it's already dry before I get it finished. It was very, very frustrating and everything. And so I'm, I'm hoping to come back to it and maybe do what you suggested is just spritz the whole thing and see if I can soften up because it, the, the, the temperature just kind of ruined the painting or the hum, low humidity. So yeah, and the good spritzer for that is uh, the one that you get that's uh, for like your sunglasses uh, or your glasses. You know, once you're done using one of those, to then um, you know clean it all out and then put some nice water in there, maybe distilled water, and then you have this really nice fine mister, as opposed to this, uh, you know big clunker. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome so much. Gabriel, do you paint every day? Uh, I'm pretty darn, pretty darn close, yeah. I would, uh, other than being a husband and a, a father, um, yeah, I get out there. Gabriel, I love the way you have painted the figures like in negative against the dark um, background. They stand out a lot. It is so lovely the way you have done them. Thank you Thank so you. much. That means a lot to hear that from you. We all think the same, I'm sure. No, but you really mean it. And I and uh, you, uh, Angela, uh, work with amazing talented artists so i Thank take you. it that you're just not building my ego uh and you're being very yeah thank you actually gabriel i like that you put life in most of your landscapes i think Ooh. a lot of us just paint landscapes and forget people and dogs and trees or birds and so forth i think it's <laughs> awesome yeah, one of my good friends, uh, Louis Juarez, he, and uh, another friend of mine, uh, Schwan Lee, will say, uh, you know, make sure you have a heartbeat in there. But you got to do it in a way that it doesn't take away from the landscape, you know? Yeah. Is your painting about the people or about the landscape? And I'm kind of teasing you to come visit me in San Diego and go paint together. And uh, we can create a masterpiece together. And Let's do uh, it. all right, you got it. And the best way to do that is just uh, message me through uh, either Facebook or Instagram, really. And then, uh, and then or we, get in your uh, car and uh, come to St. George <laughs> and paint with me. There you go. That it, the landscape and people in the landscape may have a lot to do with location. When you're on the beach in California, you can't help but have people in the landscape yeah. versus, or in Taiwan when I live there, whereas in other places in uh, landscapes in the Midwest, there's just not people available. <laughs> yep. Nice. True. I like the way you think. We get an, we got an invitation from Larry to go to everyone in Seattle, San Diego, and I guess everywhere else to go to New Mexico and see mm. what's painting in a seven percent. <laughs> uh, RH means uh, humidity, right? Environment. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I guess you would have to to wet it from the back as well, so to keep the the humidity a bit longer? Uh, you know, that's, that's great. You know, like uh, some people will go paint in the snow and some people will go and uh, paint in all these different climates. And um, I would love to experience other climates. And We could paint like Alvaro who paints in the rain. Yes. And he's, afraid of, he's afraid of nothing. Yeah, I have I have painted in the rain. Oh my goodness, it's uh, that just happened this week. Uh, I did a uh, a Zoom class, 
and it started raining just uh, 15 minutes after I just set up all the cameras and everything. <laughs> I had to go take in some shelter. And uh, it, the other people were all from the UK and uh, from other places. They were hoping to sign up for the course just because they, they were going to see uh, sunny San Diego <laughs> and it was raining. And the painting I'm sure they sympathized. I, I'm sure they understood because England is so wet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it still went really well. Have you tried painting at night? Oh, yeah. I love nocturne painting. Oh, my gosh. So right before I went full-time artist, I used to drive um, for a lift. And um, it was quite fun because people would get in my car and, you know, I was trying to help people be responsible and get home safe after the bars. And so there was this time where people weren't getting rides. And so I would find places to pull over and paint. Um, and uh, there I would, I'd just be out painting at night. And then uh, I would slap those paintings in some pre-made mats with uh, crystal sheets and people would get in the car after the bar and go, oh man, what's this, an art gallery? What's going on here, man? And <laughs> there was my paintings in the little pocket in the back seat. Because when you get in my car, uh, there would be waters, there would be like uh, some kind of starburst or something, gum. And uh, yeah, I get uh, good tips uh, and people would buy paintings <laughs> while they were in my car. It was a good time. <clears throat> the only problem was uh, once I then became a full-time artist, then it was really a, a time to learn how to hustle. And, but um, I'm really enjoying not having to worry about making money all the time uh, and just getting to paint and enjoy painting. I think uh, I learned that from Angela too. It's, uh, it's not just painting for money's sake, but. Uh... So Gabriel, we're gonna be at the end of the hour. Can you post your finished painting to Facebook? You bet, you bet. And uh, just going question, how do you know, how do you know when you're done? Uh, well, I have kind of a game plan. Um, this is actually almost done here in like five more minutes. And, and, um, and somehow um, you start in your head <laughs> of things, what else to paint? And you've got to find that before that happens. It really is true because uh, I can sit here and nitpick this and really not much more needs to be done. And I'm going to take the tape off because that's how I consider I want to see this beautiful white. If there's any traditional part of watercolor that I love and I keep, it's pulling off the tape. I make videos of just pulling off the tape because there's something just so nice seeing that beautiful white edge. Gabriel, with whom have you studied? What's that? Have you studied with, with artists and with whom do, have you studied? That's a wonderful question. So yes, uh, my mother saw that I had some talent she would send me to the art museum after school. And uh, what was beautiful was uh, I would see like the John Salmon paintings and I'd see all these other gorgeous paintings, Linda Dahl and all these wonderful people and the museums that were showing there. And uh, I got real quickly uh, exposed to just beautiful art. And then there was a time where um, I thought I had to be practical and I had to go and get a job as a barber. 
So I thought I was still creating art by cutting hair, but it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And because when my body just decided not, was going to not be happy with my negative lifestyle, um, then I just was in bed for some reason. And someone came along and gave me these wonderful Chinese brushes and paints. Um, and then I started just meeting the right people at the right time for the right techniques and like God would bring the person into my life that would teach me how to do beautiful uh, paintings of the ocean or there'd be the right person to bring into my life to uh, how do I paint this subject. And so um, I feel like uh, I've got this organic teaching uh, from many, many wonderful people. And I learned from the people that are, uh, you know, I feel like we're all on this trail and you might be walking up this trail and there's someone up ahead of you and you're thinking, oh, I would love to be, you know, that further along the trail. And it's nice when they reach back and help you up the trail. And then you turn around and do the same thing for the person that's on the trail as well. And that's where the teaching and the growth really happens. Yep. So I did get some college experience, uh, but I really, they really, the teacher uh, was the watercolor teacher at that time. He was this like cartoonist. So he was more worried about me learning how to stick out my tongue out of my mouth uh, and being funny than actually teaching me uh, those beautiful things that I've learned here with Daniel Smith. Uh, all I never knew the beautiful science stuff. So I could tell you John's my teacher too. And so it's beautiful. It's a beautiful journey. And uh, I think as long as you have a grateful heart, you're going to learn and grow. And I would Thank say you. that's done. Yes. Um, you made a comment yesterday about setting yourself up for success in a painting. And I was thinking yeah, yeah. about that a lot. Can you tell us a little bit about how you do that, please? So um, you can spend some time and you can do these beautiful grayscale um, paintings or sketches. You can uh, spend time and ponder an area you're about to paint. I think a painting starts uh, just by uh, not even touching a brush. I think a painting starts by even just thinking about it and pondering it in your spirit. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you start spending time on uh, just doing some prep work, uh, you're setting yourself up to win. And we were talking yesterday. Yeah, so you get all geeked out and nerdy on what you're going to do with your composition and your values and everything. But then there's this, there needs to be this sense of release. And so. What a gorgeous mm -hmm. painting. So Thank and you, you should know that Sarah got up at six, at five o'clock in the morning in Sydney, Australia, just to watch you because she loves uh, to see you. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. I'll come back on camera. I appreciate all of you coming. Uh, this has just been a beautiful experience that, uh, like I was saying, uh, when we were in shelter in place and I got to see John interview uh, Alvaro. And if you would have told me well, that was going on and I was looking and saying, hopeful for the future. If you would have told me I'd be doing this today, I would have probably giggled. And uh, so thank you, John, for thank having so me welcome. today. You're very, very welcome. Thank you for being there. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining today. Gabriel, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Um, great uh, questions, everybody. Uh, for those of you that are on Facebook, if you ever come over to Zoom, you can ask your questions directly. 
I um, love the energy of both groups. Thank you all very, very much. And we'll see you next Thursday and Friday. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you, John. Bye, Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, John. Thanks, Gabriel. Anna. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. Great job. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.